nut. I missed the nut button. Oh, I missed it. What ha I was gonna say, I what it. happened to it? Like, like surely he cleaned it, and for some reason we can rectify this. Extricated, <laughs> like, like I cleaned my desk. But why did that? Wait, I was gonna say, in? yeah, you clean your desk. What does that mean? Move the nut button. The nut button is a part of the desk. I took everything off of it. Bad. Was the nut button dirty? You put it back. No. It I um, mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not? it's inherently dirty, I guess. Hey, everybody! No, welcome back to. No, no, it's dirty. It could probably not like macadamia. You could be like macadamia. Pete. Yeah, that's that's what we're we're doing. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to Dungeon of the Mad Mage. It's session. Nut. I. Yeah, it's it's that session. Session nut. <laughs> See, this is this is the appropriate use of the nut button. It's uh, session one hundred and seventy six, I believe. Um, and some shit's been happening. It's not been great. I, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna do a little bit of a recap. Let's do a little bit of a recap. Show going, going blind. Previously. Outside the dungeon of the Mad Mage, the party continued their stint in the snow-covered city of Waterdeep, each pursuing right. goals in an attempt to strengthen right. themselves, further their alliances, or prepare for either the coming foray into the region of dreams or the coming battle against House Avrindar. For his part, Bones spent time traveling the city and putting up advertisements as a call to return to the old ways, hoping to draw in dwarves and other like-minded individuals and start the path of fulfilling his promise to the darkest rain shadow. He then met with Felrecht, a drow representative of Bregen de Earth at the Seven Masks Theater in an attempt to gain the Drow organization's aid against House Avrindar. Or, more specifically, in order to gain their aid in decreasing or preventing aid being given to House Avrindar. The meeting was... only Unproduct. somewhat fruitful. Bones was unable to secure Bregende Earth's actual aid in blacklisting or embargoing Avrindar, and was unwilling to fully hire the mercenary group. So instead, he had to be satisfied with paying them to stay out of the conflict. After this business was concluded, the Tabaxi spent the rest of his day working on his craft. Ashes, for his part, spent a portion of his day continuing his training under Beryl, the Master Alchemist. And then later in the evening, the Blood Hunter joined a small band of Wardens from the Temple of the Moon on an adventure that would only be spoken about in hushed tones because maybe it turns into a one-shot later on down the road. Regardless, it ended up a success. Ezra spent some time getting a gift wrapped before spending the rest of the day working in the Lifted Spirits and then uncovering <coughs> potentially disturbing information about the 14th level of the dungeon while researching the Tome of Calabash. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Matashtai spent his early morning practicing with the Masked Man. Later, he visited the Pantheon, also known as the Temple of the Saladrin, Castle Ward. Within, he found a strange place, not unlike the Willowwood, where light and nature brought forth an almost idyllic springtime here in the middle of winter. The space was definitely bigger on the inside than the outer infrastructure showed, which was saying something since it was one of the largest buildings in the city. The monks spent time just enjoying the tranquility of the place, and trying to find his own way, before eventually seeking guidance to that which he sought, the Lady of Dreams. He was led to a moonlit glade called Our Lady of Dreams Rest, and there he met Emmas Laria. The Moon Elf was highly irreverent, but sympathetic to Matashtai's cause. She listened to his story, and indeed so did many others who got caught up in the tale woven by the monk. 
the masked man would be proud. As he finished his story, Matashtai asked if someone could guide him and his allies to Dalkor, the region of dreams. Amis Laria revealed that, at least here, only a dreamer would have that power. And she was one. She cautioned Matashtai that this would be highly dangerous, that it could likely end in failure. And then she told him to return in two days with his allies and a diamond. Tashtai accepted and left, resolved with a path forward toward finding Valena. Later that night, as most of the party slept and as Ashes was just returning home, Bones was attacked once more in his sleep. Fangs in the darkness. The tabaxi shouted, calling for aid. Ata ashes, I tried to combine the two of you into a tash a tash tie. Oh god, no! What have I done? Oh. You oh. Ashes oh. and Matashtai responded, oh. and once again, there was no sign of the attacking serpent other than a momentary hallucination from Ashes. Still... Whatever was happening to Bones left him feeling empty, as if something was being taken from him. And that is where we are going to fade into our scene. Um, you all, you all went down to the to the bar afterwards, got a drink, discussed things. Um, Matashtai told you about his trip to the Temple of the Seladrin, um, and about the plan to go to Galcor, the region of dreams, in two days. For clarity on that event, um, because I don't think I mentioned it overtly, Matashtai, MS Laria wants you there the evening of the 4th, right? She needs two days to prepare, so you all have basically two-ish full days um, to pass before heading there. Um, okay. As you all head back to rest into your separate chambers for sleep, Drift off the last remaining hours before dawn. Matashtai, I want you to roll me a d20. Your DC has increased to 10. Oh, shit. 17. Ooh. Another, another night passes. You think to yourself as you drift off, Right? That, that inkling, that idea of you don't dream because of your bond. Your mind is shielded by Valena because dreams are oft a way for the quarry to wheedle into their target's minds. Without Valena here, can you dream? Will you dream? Another night passes and the answer is no. Yeah. Dream. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I I honestly don't know which Matashtai would prefer at this point. Um, it is the morning of the third of Alturiac. Um and you all have been, this is the, this will be the fourth day, fourth full day that you guys are actually up um, above uh, Undermountain. You got shit to do. Who wants to take it away? I do stuff. Bones, do some stuff. What are you doing? All right, bright and early. Mm -hmm. I'm a man on a mission. Mm -hmm. I'm heading to Falconmere Manor. Falconmere Manor. Ravenmere. What the hell is it called? Falcon. You said it right this time. It's Falconmere. 
All right. Well, I couldn't possibly have known. <laughs> you that. said. You said. You said. Raven something last time, and then you said Raven Loft Raven last Loft. time. Well, it was he said Raven something first, and then Raven Loft second. Um, it's like and Raven I was Croft or something like that. Yeah, I something. Cannot, I cannot remember that fucking name. I can't place. believe you got it right this time and thought you were wrong. Look, it's a fucking it's a gift and a curse. All right. Oh, is it? <laughs> it goes it goes both ways. All right. It's so Falcon Mirror. Uh, you okay. head your way down, uh, down the high road, down in past the trade ward, down into the south ward, um, past the towers and to Falconmere Manor, uh, which looks to be having a little bit of a bout of autumn at the moment. Man, that's so nice. I don't know why. Yep. Uh, you enter into mm. the gates. The gates recognize yep. you and welcome you in. Um, and it's brisk. It's chilly. But it's nowhere near the snowy, <laughs> blustering cold as it is outside. It's actually refreshing. Um, wow, that's nice. Mm, I like it. All right, I go to the door. Yep. Go to the door. I do my knock. Knock, knock, knock. Um, Are you supposed to knock? Am I supposed to knock here? Can I just walk in? No, it's a person. I should knock. You knock? <laughs> you, I knock. You, you you go up to the door, you have a moment where you question, um, and then you decide to knock anyways. Um, and shortly uh, after, Melanor Feldbranch greets you at the door um, and invites you in to the interior parlor, parlor as he normally does. All right. Hey, Melanor, can we talk? Let's sit down. Can we sit down for a minute? Uh, would you like some tea? I would love some tea. Mm -hmm. and Melanor, every time you're here, is basically make some tea, give the tea. You're here for like 10 minutes. Melanor's like, would you like some tea? Um, anyways, uh, Melanor goes through the motions of brewing some tea. Um, I say brewing some tea, but it's probably like a cold brew, honestly. Uh, That's anyways. Cool. Um... I mean, I guess that's technically still brewing. Mm. You are seated in the parlor. Um, you are in a uh, simple kind of like uh, wicker chair that you realize is growing into the floor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there is a simple table upon which the potted plant of Jareth Falcon um, sits. Uh, the plant... The last time you were here, the plant was like withered and motionless. Uh, the plant is now kind of like in this kind of like weird um, half. Gr it doesn't seem to match the seasons outside, right? Like Falconmere Manor seems to have a season and Jareth does not match that season. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and she seems to be in some kind of like blooming state. It's a little weird. You're not sure if she's flowering or if there's just something stuck on her little tree limbs. It looks like it looks kind of like bubble gum, honestly. It's pretty sweet. Well, I've come here today because I have a problem. Uh, what's the problem? First step is acceptance. I've accepted that I have this problem. At first, I didn't think that I had a problem, but now I've accepted it. Hmm. Now, now I, the DM, know what's going on. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Uh, Melanor looks at you very concerned. Uh, tell me, Bones, what's what's happening? I feel like I am losing parts of myself. I don't know where they're going. I don't know what I'm missing. Okay. But parts of myself are gone. And I keep waking up in the middle of the night. And these jet black serpents and cobras and adders are just there. And my allies, they, they don't see them. Every time I have this in my hand, I put the serpent's fang on the, on the table. Um, you put the serpent's fang on the table. Um, there is, uh, a, suddenly a high-pitched whining sound. 
like a tea kettle, right? That's boiling. Um, and you see the little bubblegum um, blooms on mm -hmm. Jareth go like they start to expand and then they they pop um and there's this in the whistle is replaced by a scream of rage and the serpent's fang goes whoosh, flying across the room and doom buries into the um threshold of the entryway into the parlor mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um you hear that kind of like raspy horrendous voice coming from Jareth Falcon um and she says oh god I'm gonna have to ad lib a little bit here um she uh she cries out in kind of like this half rage scenario like you bring this cursed thing here his presence you bring him into me into me yeah well i mean i don't know it's, melanor don't know looks it. shocked and he's just looking at you like what the fuck yo i don't know it's a dagger um the scream happens again that kind of like high-pitched scream uh happens again and melanor like stands up and kind of like waddles uh over to the the little like stand where he had left the tea, right? Mm -hmm. Grabs the whole pot, walks back over to Jareth's pot, dumps the whole thing of tea in into the pot, just on on the tree, on in the pot, on the soil, everything. And it, while it is screaming, there's this kind of like like drowning out of the scream of it like settling down um almost as if like Jareth is kind of like tuckering herself out um kind of mm -hmm. like scenario um mm -hmm. and then it starts to kind of like sputter and <laughs> was that really necessary and Melanor doesn't say anything he just kind of like is nodding Still, still has the like the teapot, empty teapot in his hands. He's just nodding, in general. Um, uh, and uh, Jareth uh, Falcon, um, you feel a gaze. You feel like like a a, a sentience placed upon you, and. The What's wrong with it? The calmer version of of Jareth Falcon um, says to you, "Your hand is cursed by the Night Serpent. So long as you keep that blade in your possession, he will visit you each night." And if you are unable to resist him, he will slowly take from you everything that you are. Good, okay. good, 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 good. So here's the thing. That's pretty easily my best dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything we can oh, do? Just like, give me a better it? dagger so I'm not cursed. We can attempt to remove the curse, but if it fails, then the Night Serpent's wrath could backlash, or it could shatter the weapon, or it could permanently disenchant the thing, or... If we're successful, could be all right. Uh, oh. oh, okay. What? Well, tell me about this backlash. Backlash on who? Backlash on me, or backlash on other people? Backlash on whoever the object is attuned to. 
Oh, that's me. Okay, that's fine. What what kind of backlash? Like losing arm backlash or leg? It depends on how catastrophically things spiral out of control. Perhaps it's more of what you have already lost. Perhaps it's something worse. Perhaps it's the ultimate price. Or perhaps it's worse than that. Hmm. Yeah, what Evil. is worse than the ultimate price? That's a good question. What is worse than the ultimate price? Worse than the ultimate price. What if the backlash leaves you an empty husk and the night serpent steps into you? I don't know, just kill me. Me Melador gives you a uh, white guy blinking meme. <laughs> hmm. What do we think the percentage chance the ultimate price happens? Like five? It depends guess. on five. It depends on what we try to do. Simply trying to remove the curse, I think, has a low chance of success. But if we take the time and procure the necessary materials and prepare a ritual. Perhaps we can increase our chances. Are you really sure you need this thing? I don't need it, but it's, you know, easily my strongest bag. I like yeah. how much? I don't know, 40, 50%? How is one dagger that much stronger than another dagger? Melanor, I do not understand daggers. Fetch me several daggers. Do you guys have a cool, like... Melanor looks around and is like... Walks over to a cupboard, pulls out a couple of, like, knives, walks back over to the plant. I just shit out some dags. I just... <laughs> okay. well, I, can't, I can't do anything with them from there. I try and put it in her tiny tree hand. <laughs> Melanor sees you try and, and is like, um, um... And he points down. Into the pot. Push the dagger into the soil. Yeah. Ah. This. This is a dagger. Another one! Hmm. Yes. There are differences in the quality. Hmm. Yeah. If Give me a more powerful one. So uh, canonically, she's never your second seen a best one. Before. Second best one. I guess that's probably wind spike. I just put wind spike in there. Oh, there is a difference. Size does matter. It does. Yeah, it does. You gotta get right up to short sword and then stop. I was really expecting more of a response. I got a couple of faces. <laughs> oh, uh, that was fun. Anyways, um, okay. Uh, Jared Falcon. Jared's not even nine inches. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh God, you're okay. Anyways, um, Jared Falcon has a moment where she's off in her own like little world, um. Having kind of like a little bit of like um, hyper fixation moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and Melanor, after a few minutes, is right, um, like, Madam, you were saying about a ritual um, to potentially increase our chance. Yes! Mm. The Night Serpent's powers are strong, but he has few worshippers in a place like this. We can cut off his strength, isolate it, and then perhaps bind it to a different object. That will hopefully prove successful. But we have not the necessary means of 
performing such a task. I have the strength, but not the objects for the ritual. Okay, I can work on that. What do we need? Hmm. I will have to think on it. I will have Melanor send you a list this afternoon so that you can go about procuring what will be needed. Uh, tell me, Bones, you are, as they say, a man of means, correct? I mean, I, I guess so. I'm not real rich anymore, but yeah. Some of these requirements might be a bit exotic. Okay, well, I mean, you know, I'll do what I can. All right. I guess worst case, we just, I don't, I don't know, destroy it? Cast it into a flame or... It's bone, well, so... If you just want it gone, I can do that right now! And you, yeah, you really see, see it wiggling out of the fucking threshold? <laughs> no, no, I'd prefer to keep it, but I'm just saying, worst case, like, we can just do that. Do you know what it has taken from you? I've been trying really hard to figure it out, but I, I can't. Um, You feel a presence, kind of like, hit you in the face. Um, <laughs> and Jareth Falcon doesn't ask. She is kind of rude. You feel this sentient entity kind of like try to shove her way into your body. Um, okay, do you well, once resist? I realize it's her, once I realize it's her, I'm like, okay, come on in. <laughs> like, the, you get, boom! And you're like, what are you doing? Let me in! <laughs> um, and then the second wave, uh, you're just like, oh, oh okay. Um, and you feel this, uh, this entity in intrude within you. Um, and it's an incredibly invasive feeling. Uh, she is not, uh, she does not have a filter. She is not being polite. She is not like, oh, I'm just looking for this thing. You suddenly feel as if everything about you is just kind of like being inspected. Um, I want you to roll me a d20 with advantage. Um, what's your insight modifier? Uh, my my insight modifier is seven. Uh, do it with a d20 plus nine. At advantage. Okay. One d20 plus nine. Uh, I rolled a 29. Yarg! A 19 and a 20 on the rolls. Hell yeah. Um, your DC was a 25, so nicely done. Wow, that's uh, pretty wow. high. You're fucking with the curse of a god. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, you feel right. her prying about you, um, and then you feel a you feel a are your souls a physical thing? My soul? Like, of my feet? No, the souls that you take. Yes, the soles of your feet. Yes, I asked, I asked, Get I asked, I asked, here. I asked if the soles of your feet are a physical thing. Obviously, those are a physical thing. <laughs> yeah, they're in the, uh, the, the soles tree. of his goddamn feet. So, so they're, there's some like physical representation of them. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you feel, all, you feel wherever those all, are on your body, they kind of like jiggle as if like mm -hmm. Jareth is now inspecting them. Um, mm -hmm. and then as she kind of like, um, uh, uh, seems to do some sort of observation with them um she you feel her kind of like whoosh throughout your body the surge of energy and then she pulls back out um and she from from her normal perch from her normal rest now um she speaks again and she says ah your abilities you didn't even realize I'm less of them now. The wailing that you do when you hurt something. <laughs> Shows how much she used that. <laughs> oh, I have less of it, huh? Huh? 
Huh. How, how much less? Um, she would give you some suitably cryptic answer. You have, at this point, um, two fewer uses of your Whales of the Grave. Oh, so like half. <laughs> yes. Not, well, 40%. Okay. Huh. Um, and she describes to you, each time you fail to resist the Night Serpent's um, presence, it will continue to take something from you. Hmm. Well, that is concerning. That is what happens when you play with a weapon of the gods. I mean, it was just a cool dagger. I, I know that. Did you ever take it anywhere? I mean, I, I take it in lots of places. What do you mean? A mage or a priest? Yeah, Ezra looked at it, right? I'll, I'll, Is I it think just so. me, or does Tree Lady have the same voice as Hag people? I didn't like, say anything. I, I said like, nothing. I know she's. I know she's a tree at this point, but she Is sounded she? awful lot like a hag. She could be a hag. Hags like nature. And Jeremy got yeah. ran away real quick. I think she's a hag, dude. I well, had to get. You know. I had to get another beer. I, 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 is, I, I took this that's opportunity what I would to get say if I was trying to hide a hag. I'm down to this much in my current one. It's the swill. I mean, I also might be trying to hide a hag, but fuck I me, right? A hag. The hag. Anyways, anyway, hag well, I, mean, I don't know. I think Ezra looked at it. I don't, I don't really remember. It's, it's beside the point. The point is, is you, Bones. What were we talking about? Beer losing swill. parts of myself? Um, you, Melanor pipes up and he says, You have been... Uh, you, you see him like walk over to uh, uh, a little like stand and bring out what looks like a little thing of just dust, kind of, semi-sort of. It's granules. And he, he has this little like wooden spoon. Mm -hmm. walks it over and starts to like shake some into her pot he says you have been very active as late of late madam perhaps you should rest if you are going to perform this ritual uh, don't you have some things to look into so we can let bones know what he needs to find and Jareth goes ah yes what is this blend, Melanor? I like it. It is something special I made just for you. It's and the, the plant kind of like shivers a little bit. Um, and she kind of goes quiet. Uh, okay. I guess I'll... I'll be around. I... Melanor so looks at you and he says, I will send a messenger when she is able to inform us what it is you need and when she will be able to do said ritual. Okay, sounds good. I, I guess I should... Yeah, I'll, I'll unattune from it from now. I'll take 20-30 minutes here and unattune from it. You want to leave it in our Best to not leave it in our... I, I would recommend not leaving it here. Is there like a like a flower prison I can put it in outside or something? Or uh, I... I mean, I know I'm just a... Just a uh, hold on. Uh, I'm just a... I'm just a guy. Um, Are you looking up your I'm ranking? Just, yeah. I'm yeah. just to uh, insert my ranking... Does. Spring Strider? Summer hmm. Strider? I don't remember. Cha -cha 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 -cha. Summer Strider. I, I'm just a Summer Strider, so, you know, I don't, I don't, I haven't really seen any flower prisons, but, you know, that doesn't mean they don't exist. 
Uh, I think Melanor will will say to you, um, he'll start to kind of like walk you out of the um, parlor, uh, which allows you to kind of like pull the serpent's fang uh, out from the threshold as you walk out. Um, and he'll say, it is probably best that you do not leave the item on the premises. If the madam has a change of heart, she may not wait around for your decision in the process. Perhaps you can ask one of your allies to um, walk it away somewhere, or um, perhaps magic it in some manner. I hear there are little dimensional pockets that mages can secret things away to. I have one of those. I just put it in my bag. Oh, well, I meant one oh, what that I can't get to can't be found easily. Oh, yeah. Okay. One that needs a special way to access it yeah that makes sense okay sure that's a good idea regardless did it work mitch nope it no. didn't work but... i uh I, I do um i do kind of miss holding uh, it you know so it, it's probably best that i don't i don't have it do you just... feel a pull my bag i don't need you to have another reason to stab me <laughs> It just, uh, it, you know, it just feels so nice in my hand. You, you look at Mel Melanor looks at you, looks at the serpent's fang in your hand, and you see this kind of like sheen on Melanor's eyes. And Melanor says, "It does look very nice to hold." It is. It is. All right. I'll see you in a few days. Or, I'll, I don't know, I guess eventually. I'll send a messenger when I know more. All right, bye. Okay. So. <laughs> send messenger. I mark on my sheet that I'm unattuned. The serpent's kiss. And Are I'm you sad? That's what I said. Well, I don't know, I guess I tried to unattune to it. You do, yeah, you unattuned. That's fine. Oh, okay. We did make the change that um, attunement is proficiency, right? Yeah. Yep. We didn't just talk about that. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Nope. We we did it. You guys have. I I was four, looking at my sheet the other five, day and I thought that the whole conversation was a fever dream at first. Nope. I like playing high fantasy. I like I my players lie. having. A bunch of dope shit and do being able to do a lot of cool things and having a bunch of fun magic items and the way that 5e is balanced right now makes it to where it it doesn't feel like that a lot of times <laughs> it feels like you get three things and you sit on those three things for eternity sure. and you you really hope that your plus one turns into a plus two Yep. I mean, that'd be nice if that happened. I mean, it, it is yeah, nice I mean. when that happens. Look, y'all all got a lot of shit. Don't you at me. <laughs> all right, well, I guess I'm just going to go work on stuff at the shop. Can I can I work on stuff for the shop and then work on my own project later? Or does that... That's kind of double dippy, but I don't, I don't I'm just... Well, I would say... I, I would say... Um, as we have said previously, we're kind of trying to allow your thing, Your each of your characters has a specific thing that mm -hmm. takes an eight-hour workday-ish to, to accomplish, right? And then when you're up, when you're down in the dungeon, it makes sense to just do that once, right? When you're yeah. up top, it makes sense to be able to do something else with your day. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, if Ashes is going to be like doing potion crafting and then warden of the moon shit and ezra is doing like lifted spirits stuff and tome of calabash stuff right like bones can be doing bone crafting and making stuff for the worm bone because they're two separate things bone crafting and crafting bone yeah, yeah like, well it's running it's a like, shop you know, like, yeah because you're not making point, magic for items the for the worm bone. bone yeah stuff for the worm bone would be like really easy yeah exactly uh, yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. So if that's if you want to make both of your workdays that, um, both of your workdays are that by all means. Um, okay, that is 
but that's that's where I go. Okay. So uh, Bones heads off um, to the Worm Bone, uh, spends some time working with Oshotu. Um, how do you want to do? What what exactly are you trying to accomplish at the Worm Bone? Are you just making stock, or are you improving the store, or are you coaching Oshotu? What's your what's your plan? Or something different. Well. We hit, so we have the sweet chandelier now. Yes, you do. I want to make like bone staves, like bow staves, but bone. Bone staves. You okay. need a. All right. What kind That's of what I want to do. I want to try and draw in the. Staff. I want to draw and draw in the caster monk druid crowd. So you're what you're trying <laughs> to do. What it sounds like you're trying to do is you're trying to make stock but also do some branding basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So what we're going to say here is, is you are a proficient enough bone crafter uh, or bone carver that making something like this is not going to be an especially difficult concept, especially if you're not trying to masterwork it, right? Um, sure. You're just trying to make some stuff. So uh, we will do a casual roll of, um, let's say a D eight. Look, Jake, I didn't put the one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now what I need you to do is I need you to actually, um, I say, I say what I need you to do. This will be a separate thing unless you can come up with a reason why it would be. Uh, well, I, what are you doing from a branding perspective? Or or from like a like a product, you know, perspective here. So you're making these things, but how are you advertising them? Yeah, I put them in the window. I say, wow, look. Is so you making like learned. a little sign for them and like you know, it's they're like a pithy, a pithy like sales pitch or something. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna pay some urchins to go Ooh. around and talk about these awesome new new staffs and uh, you know bone related items. Urchins. One of the urchins is uh, just gives you this kind of like look and is like, "That's it. They're just made of bone." Just go talk to people about them. Damn. Takes your, said takes your money and uh, runs oh. off. Words hurt. Okay. <laughs> uh, roll me a persuasion check. Or, just, yeah, no, we'll do persuasion. I'm persuasive mm -hmm. as hell today. Um, done and done. You spend the next... How many urchins were, like, two gold pay? Huh? How many urchins were will two gold pay? I mean, a batch of them to cover, like, advertise or hawking throughout the North Ward. ward. Alright, I pay a batch of them. Wonderful. Who's up next? And I'll be sure to leave. I leave the door cracked for any kind of animals that want to come in. Need to come in. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> right. um, I'll go. I was just going to go see if uh, Mess Man's around. Um, and then. We'll brag. Um, like, I was trying to think of how you prepare for a dream adventure. So. The only thing that I can think about is expanding your imagination. So and I'm going to see the mass man, and then I'm going to go to a library and look up some sweet books. I mean, the font of knowledge is like 20 minutes or less away from New Olam's Academy. So very easily in the same area. All right, cool. Well, yeah, I'm going to okay. go see the mass man, and then I'm going to try and find some cool books on... Um, great dream adventures and um, lucid dreaming. 
I knew he was going to say lucid dream. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> like Matt's learning to lucid dream. <laughs> Matt's never dreamt before learning to lucid dream. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, you uh, make your way across the city to New Olam's. Um, the Masked Man is there. Um, as soon as you enter into the Masked Man's um, office, uh, he looks at you uh, and through his mask, his voice never, like, ne it's never, he's always speaking at you through this mask, voice never muffled. Um, he says, there's something different about you today, Matashtai. Um, what is different? You've been... Oh, I, I, I had a great conversation yesterday. Hmm. A breakthrough? I think so. Hmm. Tell me all about it. All right, well, so anyway, I went to the temple of the Saladrin. Sal Bunch of elves. Mm-hmm. Um, Indeed. Because I'm trying to find a way to get to Dalcor, save Elena. So I'm looking for some, some people who know about What have me. I told you about s s using proper nouns that people might not understand or be aware of? Um, it makes them but, feel excluded you know from her. the conversation. Fine. Anyway, uh, I went there and I started telling my story about why I need to get there to all of the, the the people that were napping they woke up out of their naps to come listen to me it was a great time they they liked my stories a lot but then they went back to napping afterwards so maybe they don't like it that much I don't know that's a good point <laughs> or maybe maybe they decided to go nap and have a pleasant dream about it Speaking of, do you know any good books about lucid dreaming? Or dreaming I really, really vividly? <laughs> do not. I, um, I had one experience with lucid dreaming. Um, and then it wasn't lucid dreaming. Um, and anyways, let's, let's go, let, let's go make the rounds. Let's go make the rounds. All right. Um, the masked man takes you on the rounds of New Olam's. Talks to you. Gets you to talk to people. Is a relatively normal training session. Roll me persuasion check. Uh, give me one second. I gotta refresh my roll twenty. It's very laggy. Gotta be to ten. It is very struggle bussy. Very bus struggle. What are you doing, still, Otis Devotery? Still. Still doing the struggles, but I'm gonna try and hit it anyway. All right, you said D20 or a persuasion check. Okay, persuasion. I don't know what it is. It's a, a 16. 16. Yeah, never fails. Mass man. After several hours of conversation. Turns and looks at you, uh, Matashtai, and says, Are you certain that you entered into the correct line of work, Matashtai? Uh, you told me about your, you know, heritage and where you're from and all that, but I feel as though you perhaps could have been a great statesperson for your people. You think so? You're... Not the most well-spoken individual that I have ever spent time with. But you speak from the heart, and it shows. It's engaging, and it it draws the people that you engage with in. There's an honesty and a passion about you. Oh, well, that's nice of you to say. We don't have that great of a government, but I'll look into it when I get back. Oh, I got the sads. <laughs> I really got the sads because I I was I was like I had this thought, I was like in your mind you hear Valena say, No you won't, you're just gonna go fight. 
But Valena's not uh, here. There she doesn't. No she doesn't get to say that. Oh no! I gave myself the sads. <laughs> oh. uh, the masked man looks at you and he says, "I have so much more I can teach you. Honestly, like there's a lot that you could still learn, but you've come a very long way in the short time that we have been studying together." Can I do the talkings now? <laughs> Matashtai, you could always do the talkings. <laughs> the talkings were always in you. <laughs> Just now you're better at doing the talkings. Matashtai, you gained efficiency. Now persuasion. has a plus five to his <laughs> persuasion. Right? Yeah! Yeah! Persuasion! Actually, yeah. six because of the item stone. Oh, good point. Yeah. Roll me persuasion check. You're catching up to me now. Lamo. And now I'm going to roll on that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would have been so... <laughs> I would have just taken it away. Take it right the fuck no. back. Back to zero. Oh, We're oh, restarting. Oh, Mass Man just looks at you and he says, "Obviously, I was wrong in my assessment. <laughs> you shunned you, never to strips, teach you again. Strips my vocal cords out of my throat. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Jesus Christ! That Mass Man become Earth Lord. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, Matashai, congratulations. Uh, you put the time and effort in. Uh, you paid the money, the coin. Um, you are now trained in persuasion." Uh, do well, shit. Now, what do I do when I'm topside? I don't know. I need a new hobby, movie. guys. Training uh, okay. something else. When what I when I go back to um, the guys, I like I, I pull the, the audience. What shall I learn next, guys? I don't know. Lucid dreaming. That's mm, that's apropos. Speaking of your lucid dreaming, um. After spending the morning with the masked man, uh, you head to the Font of Knowledge in the afternoon. Um, what is your plan within the Font of Knowledge? Are you um, just going to go rifle through some books? Are you going to seek guidance? What, what's Matash I do yeah, when he um, walks into this massive library? This thing is like... Definitely get help. <laughs> this thing is like... I don't know how to describe I realize I don't know spatially how to describe a really big building other than saying that it has like multiple How many orcs do you think could fit in there? Oh, that's not a good we we already know like a lot can fit in a small space. So. Definitely definitely like definitely like 3000 orcs easily. <laughs> so so mean, it's like 50 feet across or what? <laughs> Nuts the butts. Uh, Nuts the butts. That's a that's a very particular shade of red there, Jake. <laughs> you know. All right. Uh, uh, he's actively planning when he's going to come murder me. Well, you know, look. Um, Sounds like his daughter's got it covered. So if you die in a dream, you try. Yeah, she'll, she'll kill me in no time. Don't worry, just play the long game. <laughs> Exhaustion, yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Matasha, you enter into the font of knowledge, um, knowing that you're just like, uh, -uh. Um, you you walk over to a row of attendants of librarians. Um, the font of knowledge is a is a place of research, it's a place of learning, but it is also a place for the public, for for the people of Waterdeep to come and better themselves and learn about the world and other worlds um and yeah that's very accessible um you approach an attendant ask about dreaming lucid dreaming specifically um well yeah i, I don't know that matt would truly know the term lucid dreaming but he would be looking for some knowledge on dreams how to control them or how to um i don't know make yourself more powerful in dreams today matashtai learns the term lucid dreaming because <laughs> you ask those questions and that's what the attendant is going to take you to is it's going to take Sweet. you to a table and bring you a couple books about lucid dreaming um so i am going to say 
Matashtai, you can roll me a history check, um, which is wood. my stand-in for Why a library. Why did persuade the book to tell me more? No, no, you, no, you can't. <laughs> no, you what? cannot. A, a four. How's um, a four? God, it, the dice roll is so slow on my Firefox oh, right is now. It? <laughs> like it's like. Nice. I might have to open this in Chrome. Hold on. Oh yeah, really interesting. Today we are sponsored by Google Chrome. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that is not our sponsorship. Mm -hmm. I am legally obligated to mention that that is not a sponsorship for us. We have no sponsors. <laughs> Please, oh, no, YouTube, don't yeah, come get me. Say when you're sponsored, not when you're not sponsored. Anyways. Um, so, Matashtai, this book about dreams is the least interesting thing about dreams that you feel like you <laughs> could ever have experienced. You yourself don't I think actually I've been missing nothing have by not dreaming. dreams, right? But you've heard people talk about their dreams, and they seem nice. Nightmares obviously don't seem nice, but this book doesn't even really talk about nightmares a lot. It just talks about, like, like staying perfectly still and breathing in a particular way and like having like trigger phrases and like things to make you realize that you're dreaming it's awfully dull excellent matashai spends the next several hours reading about um something that doesn't quite click cool all right well i tried yeah absolutely i head back home grab a beer grab a beer grab a Grab a bar. Who's up next? Mine should be pretty short. Ashes. I just, I just oh, want, I, I just want to go to potions class. All right, potions class. How many, how many oh. days do you have left? You're pretty close, aren't you? Uh, if, if this one goes through, I will have completed oh. four of the requisite five. Or the requisite five. Gotcha. Um, there is no check for your particular. Uh, your yours is like a. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't, yours is like a private school, whereas Matashtai's is like a public school. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to phrase that, right? Like, it's, it's a different scenario. Um, anyways, uh, you go through the motions, you spend your eight mm -hmm. hours. Um, oh, I know what it is, is it's a check at the end. That's how we played it the first time around. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, you go through the motions. It's like taking a test. Um, you spend the day with Beryl. Um, yeah. you, you feel like you are, um, you feel like you are absorbing the lessons that the old elf is teaching you. Uh, <laughs> and then what else do you do with your day? Uh, hmm. Well, it doesn't have to be like... A resource thing, but I'd probably still go to the Temple of Moon. I feel like that's kind of like my my just kind of hangout spot these days. That's fine. Uh, you are more than welcome. It, it, and unless you are actively seeking some particular thing, you are mm -hmm. no more than welcome to go to the Temple of the Moon. You can count that as a resource consumption and just be like, I spend time doing stuff at the Temple of the yeah. Moon, trying to I mean, like. I'll just like. You know. I'll just try some prayer stuff and then like go beat up some dummies and maybe help with menial tasks, just, if you know, other people around talk with Taverin, maybe Roll me a chart. d20. Rolling in a d20. D Do you want to roll a 20? Okay, here you go. Here's a 20. It's a four. Okay. <laughs> Nothing bad happens, but, like, this is, you're just, you're just spending a random day, so it's a 5% chance of something cool happening. Otherwise... You know, you're just chilling at the House of the Moon with your new warden buddies. Um, you are, I will say, becoming a more consistent feature within the House of the Moon. Um, yeah, 
I, I want to make it clear that, like, you know, I'm going to go back down again, so I'm not going to be... Well, even even ignoring that, right? Like, you were only down in the dungeon for, like, three or four days, and prior to that, you were back up here for, like, another couple days, and while you were here, you were at the House of the Moon. So, like, yeah. yes, you come and go, but there is this kind of, like prevailing notion now with with a lot of the acolytes and priests and priestesses and etc etc the right. the individuals that work and inhabit the house of the moon that you are less a warden by honor and more a warden by actuality um, because your presence matters right in in that situation like that. That um, makes me happy you're, it's not it's not like one hundo percent or anything, but like it is right, this right, right. it's course. this growing presence, right? Um you are learning more people's names, more people recognize you. Uh there's less of that awkwardness of when you kinda like enter into the temple where you like you gotta flag somebody down and be like, Hey, can you take me to so and so? You generally now know where most people can be found. Um, like you know where Am Amnestria's actual like offices are. You know where the warden's uh, barracks and the light sail cells and the Do training they have a, grounds. Like a straight up barracks in the temple. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right. Basically, I, I dig it. I mean, it's uh, it's not quite, it's not quite as much a barracks as like an actual barracks would be, but it's like a wing. Um, like two separate hallways of mm -hmm. rooms and the rooms are shared rooms. So there's like two to three wardens per large kind of like common room type situation. Um, so yeah. Anyways. Um, so you are, you are becoming more familiar with the house of the moon and the house of the moon is recognizing you more as an actual member than as an adventurer who happens to have the favor of their goddess and is occasionally around, right? Yeah. Um, so, very cool. Um, Ezra, the last one on the list. Boyo Buckaroo. You already, you already called it. You already called it. Did I? What? 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 A day at Troll Skull followed by the book. Day at Troll Skull followed by the book. Um, anything different that you're doing about Troll Skull or, or is it just the same kind just of like continuing. mentorship? Just continuing to support and then, then any the projects same thing, that we're carrying over, all that fun stuff. Same thing with you then. Um, you have already made kind of like a check for this week of Troll Skull, which has been a positive check. So now you're just going to roll a d20, and if you get a 20, the excite! How about 13. a 13? It's, it's nice, but it's not excite! So, um... Another day spent at Troll Skull, happily and successfully influencing the direction that the um, that the tavern takes. Um, you witness that Troll Skull seems to be. It's not, I, w I wouldn't describe it as like a well-oiled machine, but it is a happy working environment, right? The people that work there are happy that they are working there. Um, they value their job and they generally enjoy each other's company. There are a couple of like sore spots perhaps between specific like um, employees, but they are well mannered enough to like leave well enough alone rather than like dig in their heels and like come at each other. Um, and in the cases where that you've witnessed where like something does begin to brew, um, you find Sine is exactly what you have hired him for. He defuses the situation, handles the scenarios, and and it's all good. Um, which allows you to analyze these types of situations and just kind of like flit in and be like, oh, we could do X, Y, Z, or hey, I, I noticed this thing. Let's try to fix this, or blah, 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 blah. So, um, very good. Um... What would you like to do as far as tomes go? We're gonna spice it up. Spicy? Oh no. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go into the Arcana world and I don't know that I'm prepared for spicy. Neither am I, Jeremy. Neither am I. Oh shit. Where, but we do it anyways. Where'd I put this? Oh god. A 26. 
Oh. That'll do. Which? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That's Malin. not concerning. Hey, everybody, everybody ready for this to take a moment? Yeah. Why not? No, I refuse. I'll, well, it doesn't have to take a moment. I can get you the details. I can take the things um, I need. Ezra, you are spending time with a different bent, a different, a different aim in focus. You have unlocked magical secrets from this tome before. You've unlocked riddles. You've unlocked lore. You're you're looking back for that those magical secrets, right? Like there are upcoming moments outside of the dungeon that the riddles and the lore perhaps might not be as useful for, right? Whereas some extra spice might make things a little improved. As you're reading through Uncovering magic within the tome is strange because, one, you're not a wizard, right? Your magic doesn't, while, yet, yeah, while, while you have done copious amounts of studying, and honestly, you could be a wizard if you had just multi-classed in the past, right? Like, um, you, you have experienced that your magic stems from a different style of practice right from a from a different source um and so even if you were to turn the page and you were to just see oh here's a here's a written out spell right like that's not your initial go to you could take that, right? Obviously, you ritually cast things. You've utilized scrolls in the past, right? Like, it makes sense to you. Um, but that's not how your inner being operates, how the magic within you operates. Which is cool, because that's not really how the book operates the majority of the time. Um, so it's a weird book, so sometimes it does what it wants. In this particular case, you are leafing through page after page of... Not gibberish, but it's hard to it's hard to know if what you're reading is making a point or if it's gibberish adjacent. The book has a lot of that type of stuff. The the you know, the random words of a madman. Except as you're reading through all of it, something begins to form in the back of your mind. This concept, this idea. And at first it doesn't really like trigger anything. It's just like a general amorphous scenario. And then you feel this kind of like hum. And Zeltzor kind of like flits over. And it's like, hey, Ezra, you okay? You're all sparky. And you realize your vitiligo is kind of like flared up. And as that happens, you feel this kind of like inner surge um, as you temporarily learn the spell Illusory Giant. <laughs> the fuck is Illusory Giant? I've never even, I've never heard of that. Like because a it's, giant, but not it's real. Because it's not in any book you'd find from Wizards of the Coast. Ah, from the Sith, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's how that yeah. goes. Yep. Have the look. It is a Sith spell. Um. So, Ezra, I will not a spell no. that I get you the yeah. details to that later. Um. But for now, you can notate that you have learned the sixth level spell illusory giant Oops. yata 
Is it abjuration level six components VSM spell save DC seven? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's most definitely not. Um, I will. I'll try to during break. I'll get you the all of the no particulars. Worries. So I click the wrong button, and yep. that's what happens. So. That's good. Okay, that is that. Anybody doing anything else for the rest of this day? Negative. I'm just like working on talismans, but oh, right. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, understood. Miss, that was a misinterpretation on my part of what you were trying to do with the second part of your day. My bad. Um, oh, your, sorry. I, I mean, I could not. That's I, uh, well, here's the thing. Your research scenario failed, so it, it's not like you actually gained any. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. He was um, never going to. So, well, there was a chance that he actually did gain something out of it. But um, anyways, uh, uh, yeah, you uh, mark down a talisman work if you would like to. Um, and you and I have been passing back some notes on talisman stuff. Um, uh, I'll try to yeah. make sure over the course of the next week we knock some more stuff out to make sure you have exactly what you need. Anyways, moving on. Um, another day passes. Another night falls. I need wisdom saving throws from everybody. But no constitution saving throws because the constitution saving throws were a mask for the dagger. Gotcha. Oh, bamboozled again. And I choose to do the constitution instead of the wisdom? No, you can't. Can we just permanently swap Ooh, nice. swap it so that I do only wisdom rolls and Jig does only the constitution rolls? So I'm gonna say that still lets me disintegrate both of you since that's a dexterity saving throw. So yes. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm, cool. I'm fucked regardless <laughs> in that category. <laughs> Touche. Um, fantastic. Bones, please roll me a constitution oh, saving throw. Oh, okay. You are still cursed. Yeah, fair. Oh, yeah, where's the dagger? I mean, him unattuning doesn't break a curse usually. Yeah, where is it? Bones. In his bag. You yeah. sleep through the night. You wake up once or twice just out of, you know, habit or curiosity, whichever. No snakes, no fangs in the darkness. But you do feel a presence. There is something out there. Some evil eye upon you. But it does seem as though you unattuning to the object has diminished the presence of its gaze. Mm. Okay, very good. Okay, fantastic. Matashtai! Yeah. 1d20, DC 15. Yeah. Wow. 15. Meets it, beats it. <laughs> he said it, he hit it. I did the needful. Finally do it. I think I'm going to leave that open to your interpretation. What does that mean? I think it means you spent a portion of the day reading about dreams. You've been thinking about Do I dreams. Want to dream? Does Matashtai want to dream? Does he try to dream? Yeah, I want to dream. I want to test out this whole dream thing. What does Matashtai... All right. Does he get that dick? All right. <laughs> Roll me a wisdom saving throw. DC. Wee's down. Wee's down. Saving throw. Okay. 
Well, you don't have a nightmare as your starting experience for dreams. So that's nice. That's promising. Um, Roll me a straight intelligence check. DC 15. I'm a dumb dumb. But I can't be stopped. <laughs> Jake! <laughs> Jake is so... <laughs> I feel like for Jake, this all falls into OP monk shit, and it's just like... I don't get how people say monks are not broken. Just how by playing a monk. Class? Just this by playing a monk. Is, is... Is that Ranger was the weakest? Is it, no, is it, is monk, monk, is, monk is considered it's, by it's this the weird, experts. It's this very weird thing. Here's the thing. I've seen so many like theory crafting things that include monks to do crazy shit. So it's definitely not like an actual scenario, but there's this thing where people are like, monks suck. I think it's because of people playing bad subclasses like the way of the four elements or something like that mm. right where it's like those four things is absolute dog shit it's real bad right like I mean, it's yeah. it's also campaign specific we're fighting in a dungeon so it's all pretty enclosed and melee very, very fair a dragon can't just fly away and swoop through flying sure, passes sure and... sure yeah anyways Matashtai. what the fuck Monk what, up, what else you got for me? What else you want me to roll? No, I that was it. You <laughs> you rolled the wisdom saving throw, so it's not a nightmare. And then the DC for kind of cultivating your own dream was a 15. Um and you had a very low chance of succeeding. That. <laughs> you had what, a 20% chance of succeeding? Something like that, yeah. Because you had to roll, uh, yeah, a you had to roll a seventeen or higher. Because <laughs> if he rolls a sixteen, it's a fifteen. Because he has a minus one. Yeah. Can you say the DC was fifteen though? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Sorry. So twenty. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 20, Correct. Yeah. Was, was that making an eighteen percent? No. No, a twenty. No, it's still uh, twenty. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, side. twenty. It should be twenty-five percent, oh, okay. right? Am I? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. math Whatever. is my strong suit. N math is none of our strong suits. Um, so regardless, I'm uh, great at math. Thank you. Matashtai, what do you dream about? You you go to sleep and you're like, I want to try this. What do what does Matashtai will himself to dream about? Um, if I get to pick, yeah. you give me full agency here. I would try to dream of where Valena is being held, or is staying, or is hiding, or is existing. Or where you think it is. Gotta check a thing. Gotta check a thing. I have two ideas of where I think she is. So I, I, while Jeremy's looking that up, um, do you guys have the soundboard turned on? I, I did. Yeah. All right. I made this. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh nice. nice. I made a little peanut pop up when you do it too. I saw that. <laughs> nice. That's pretty cool. I do like that. Now um, we have two things. Thief. Thief in the night. Matashtai. Yeah. I would like a religion check from you, DC 10. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um... Excellent. <laughs> Can't be stopped! True. Can't stop, won't stop! Uh, you gotta sleep. I, I passed out. <laughs> just thinking about religion. You, you, you go to sleep, and I go to different music. The sleep music. No, creepy wind music. The wind music. Ooh, never mind, I changed. Oh, it's very... It's swelling. 
as most wind does. Dashtai, close your eyes. You think your desire to find Valena to restore what has been lost, to, to aid your friend as she aided you. You think maybe if I can dream about it, I can I can find out where she is. You can prepare for this excursion somehow. Maybe you can get some sort of inside knowledge. Just darkness. Like you're asleep, but you're conscious, and it's just nothing. Until it's not. You step onto what feels like the surface of a pool of water. Your foot goes maybe an inch or two into the water or it touches a smooth flat surface look down your vision kind of like the way dreams do stolen from you where you don't you don't quite control what you're actually seeing your vision is stolen from you down you see your foot stepped forward the ripples out from it and you see a reflection over your shoulder as you're looking down into these ripples. The half, one half of the face of a beautiful elven woman who has the most disparaging look on her face that you have perhaps ever seen on anyone's face. And almost oh, in here. Telltale style, just over her shoulder, is the faint reflection of a crescent moon. And you're just kind of stuck there, staring at the ripples, staring at this reflection. It's staring back at you. And then you hear a voice in your mind with a presence that I am unable to recreate that says you have absolutely no idea what you're doing, do you? Nope. <laughs> do you realize that the place you're trying to get to isn't on this realm? Well, I would assume all dream realms are not on this realm. You, the, the reflection visibly rolls their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the world you're on has its dream realm which you are now inside of. The place you seek is a different world's dream realm. But they don't like touch. There are threads from within their cores that trace through the cosmos that the right individuals can ride from realm to realm, but you are not one of those individuals. Fair. But can't I dream about something on this realm that could be in the other one? You can dream about 
almost anything. But that doesn't make it real. Rude. But at this point, I'm just looking for... Paint. A little guidance. Was that not what you sought when you sought out my acolyte? Well, yeah, but it would help to give her uh, a place to go to rather than say all of this. Why do you think she needed two days? Even now she sleeps yeah. and dreams her way into Dalcor. Seeking the avenues with which she will lead you and your friends on your journey. All right. I get it. Um, this was rude of me. It's not Sorry. rude, but it is presumptuous. <laughs> I hate the feeling of sitting on my hands. Hmm. If I am seeing correctly, you spent your day making better of yourself, researching to try to better influence this coming journey, and then crafting to better prepare for this coming journey. I don't see a lot of Hand sitting. Got him. Got him. Because your god doesn't make you right. <laughs> being right makes me right. And being right <laughs> so frequently is what makes me a god. Damn fucking rip. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um, no, nope, nope, he's not involved in this conversation. That bashfully just kind of like fair, 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 fair. You do a lot, Matashtai, and your quest is noble. Don't forget that others are involved in it, and that's. You need them to be involved in it. You can't do this on your own. And I know you're not trying, trying to, to obviously. But you need to trust that those other individuals will do their part. What if you had dreamed yourself into a nightmare? Of the Emerald Persuasion? If I'm being honest, I probably would have tried to punch it like I do most things. Hmm, and how well would that have been if that nightmare had been inhabited by the being that curses your abode? Wait, say that one more time? There is an who, who artifact your within your household that haunts the dreams of its inhabitants. Uh oh. I knew I knew it was that damn dagger. Of course it was the dagger. I told him it was the dagger. You didn't listen to me. Is there uh any tips on how to help him through that? What did I just say? That I do too much. And that you should. Trust in others. And do you think that he is just going to let things remain the way they are? Well... <laughs> Look, as a DM, if I had not witnessed what he did earlier this day, I would, I would. Well, all 
All right. Fair enough. So suppose I should uh, get out of this here dream realm, huh? Unless you want to stay. I've never dreamed before. What do, what do I dream about? Most people don't get the choice. I'd be a dragon. <laughs> of all the things that you could dream of, you want to be a dragon. Yeah, sounds kind of cool. This is why mortals never cease to amaze me. All right. <laughs> uh, the reflection kind of like vanishes. The pool ripples and you look up. He does the dream thing again where your vision's kind of like torn away from you involuntarily like you look up um, and you see mountaintops around you and you hear the roaring of wind and you see diving out of the clouds uh, on your left an immense copper dragon um, and then you hear this piercing kind of like high screech kind of like whistle um and your your vision is torn to the right and you see um kind of like like banking up um is a smaller silver dragon um and matashtai dreams of flying through the sword mountains with Edzeradoa and nindeltath um what color dragon does Matashtai dream himself as? I was going to ask you what color I am. Your dream. Hmm. Hmm. What's the, um... What's the good version of lightning? Is that copper or bronze? Brass. Brass. I'll brass. be a brass. Is it brass? I I mean I I, mean, I, 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 I will sure absolutely the... defer to Jake. I I tend to sure yeah be the... very like <laughs> very differential to Drake. Uh, brass is fire. I think it might be bronze. Bronze was poison. Yeah, bronze there is electric. bronze is yeah. lightning. Okay. I concede. I had a I had a dragon guru y as I thought I was. Oh no. <laughs> You're more dragon guru y than most of us are. Um so yeah, uh copper, bronze, silver flying through the skies of um of the Sword Mountains. It's disjointed. It's wonky. It's not it's not a dream. You've been told uh, about dreams. You've heard stories about dreams. And when people talk about their dreams, they normally talk about the overarching concept of the story or like particular moments. So it makes it sound fluid. It's not. It's not fluid at all. It's like super disjointed. You're like flying and then you're flying some more, but you're flying in a different place, but you're still flying with the Zeradoa and Nindeltath, and then you're like looking at yourself and you're not flying, and then you're with the Zeradoa and Nindeltath, but you're back at the tavern that you were at at Undercliff, right? Um, and it it's it's a it's all over the place. It's very disjointed and none of it kinda like sticks together in one cohesive element, right? Um yeah. But for for one random night, uh Matashtai um, before I wake up dragon. um I will um I don't know if I say it in the dream or if I think it in the dream, but I reach out to Sehanin and I say Thank you for the words of wisdom. We'll try to be good while we're in your realm. 
Oh god. Uh, the thing is that I realize I'm about to say as a god in Faerun. <laughs> my total irreverence. Um, Sehanin Moonbow responds to you um, a faint whisper in the back of your mind. Um, she says, Don't get my acolyte killed. And fuck up the quarry. Well, the bad ones, right? And I wake up. She, she doesn't elaborate. <laughs> she just does not elaborate. There is no further communication. Your dream's over. You wake the fuck up. Um, <laughs> and it is the morning of the 4th. And I think that is uh, where we are going to go ahead and take our break. Because I got to get some data to Ezra. Uh, and Bones, there will likely be an animal messenger for you this morning, and I gotta get the fucking information yeah, for that. Animal so, um, yeah, So, Una Momento, we're gonna go on break, and when we get back, we will show how some sausage is made? I don't know. Um, what? we'll... Uh, sausage! We'll... <laughs> what are you looking at me strange like? We'll be back shortly with more Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Bye bye everybody. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.